This psychiatrist ends up in the loony bin. Talk about a bad day at work. Meet Chloe. She passionately describes her sussy time with the devil. Psychiatrist Dr. Miranda Gray in front of her believes Chloe is talking about her stepdad. Doubtful about the devil's affairs here. My parents were also skeptical when I mentioned Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. They only started to believe me when I said it was our gardener, Juan. Apparently, Chloe cut her stepdad's throat. So now, she's in prison slash mental hospital. Miranda leaves Chloe in anger and pain, because that's how free psychiatry works, and approaches Dr. Douglas Gray to discuss Chloe's case. Miranda thinks she's failing to reach Chloe's mind and that they're giving her too many drugs. Douglas calms Miranda down, saying she's a good girl and giving her a juicy kiss. Because that's how psychiatry works, I guess. Pete Graham walks in and interrupts the scene. Huh, thanks bro. It resembled a fat kid eating ice cream on a hot summer day. Or was that just me? Pete invites Miranda for some pizza, but she's already full of her husband, so she refuses and proceeds to work. She's working until the generator cracks up and uses it as an excuse to get out and enjoy some swimming. Finally, the day is over and Miranda drives home through a severe storm. She stops when she sees a police roadblock. There's a sinkhole, so Miranda has to drive another way. Passing the old wooden bridge, she suddenly sees a girl's figure on the road and gets into a ditch. Miranda gets out of the car and approaches the girl, who looks terrified and wet. The dog tries to cover her with her coat, but the girl self-ignites. Classic. Like any girl I start flirting with. <laughs> Miranda wakes up. It was a bad dream. But she wakes up in a cage in the mental hospital. Okay, maybe it wasn't that bad of a dream after all. Miranda gets pissed off. So Dr. Pete approaches her and gives her some tranquilizers. She's been a patient for three days and it's the first time she has become conscious. Pete knows Miranda is a psychiatry specialist. So he tries to establish a rational dialogue to make Miranda remember what has happened to her. Miranda recalls the last day she was normal. She goes step by step through her story, but instead of falling into a ditch, she recalls getting home and seeing her husband, Doug. No way. Now she remembers the girl. Yes, there was a terrified girl in blood. But Pete tries to bring Miranda back to her memories of her husband. She doesn't understand, so Pete breaks the truth to her. Her husband, Doug, is dead. Rip in peace. And she is the one who killed him. Oh, that's tough. So Miranda goes into denial and gets another dose of drugs. After some demonic dreams, Miranda wakes up and goes on a walk in her new home. Now she's a patient in her hospital. Chloe approaches her new mental buddy and handles her a note from a newspaper, where Miranda reads about her murdering dog. The next day, or night, the darn place has no windows, Miranda wakes up feeling like someone's in the room with her. She approaches a glass door and sees somebody writing, not alone, spooky. Ghosty flies around Miranda more until she falls asleep and wakes up from doctors giving her medicine. Then she goes to shower. Oh nice, a room full of insane women in their birthday suits. Just what I asked Santa for. Miranda showers until she starts hearing someone whispering that she's nuts. She looks around and sees the girl from the road accident. All the faces around start to look creepy. Suddenly, the girl approaches and cuts Miranda's arm. Somehow, Miranda has managed to cut herself 35 times with a scalpel. However, no one understands how she got it. Pete approaches our crazy girl. Although Miranda understands it's impossible, she tries to prove to Pete that somebody else cut her. Pete is a Santa Claus denier, too. He doesn't get it. After an intimate dialogue, we learn that Pete wanted to have sussy time with Miranda, and she possibly wanted it too, but they didn't because of her husband. While outside, Miranda approaches Phil, her ex-colleague, and asks him to change her treating doctor from Pete to somebody else. Apparently, Miranda killed the only other doctor in this hospital, so this is impossible. After a while, Miranda meets her attorney named Teddy. Man's got bad news. The hearing is next week, and things are bad for our suspect girl. The sheriff saw her driving home. Prints are on the murder weapon. Neighbors heard the screens. Everything suggests you're in trouble. Miranda tries to explain that she didn't have a motive. So maybe it was one of her patients. But Teddy cuts the crap. Nah girl, the only way we win this is if we plead temporary insanity. And since you're a psychiatrist, everyone will believe you're faking it. Bad situation indeed. But Miranda doesn't even want to accept that she's crazy. Although, even her attorney doesn't believe her at this point. Now I understand how flat earthers feel. Sheriff Ryan arrives. He was on the roadblock the night Miranda supposedly killed her husband, and what's worse, he was Doug's best friend. That'll be tough. Oh, not really. The man goes nuts on her right away. Bros, always better than ho girls. The scene goes tense when suddenly, Miranda's arm starts bleeding. The cuts on her arm transform into words. Not alone. Spooky. Will this help people believe she's not crazy? Guess it'll just worsen the situation. Love how these psycho houses work. Even if you come healthy, you'll become darn crazy inside. That night, she begins remembering what happened that night. It all looks like that terrified bloody girl on the road got into Miranda and made her come home, take an axe, and murder her husband. Good luck telling this to the jury. Miranda comes to Phil and confesses she was there on the murder night, but she wasn't alone. Suddenly, she sees an upside-down photo of the girl behind Phil's back. That's her. 
that possessing girl from the road. Turns out it's Rachel, Phil's daughter. But seeing her was impossible because she was dead, and she died four years ago. Damn, if only there was another photo in the room. We see footsteps approaching Miranda's cell. Miranda wakes up and says something, like, You know, I'm a scientist. Ghosts don't exist, but if you're a ghost of Rachel, then let me out of this cell. And the cell opens. Whoa, it was that easy. They'll be the best of partners. Crazy scientist and her friend Rachel the dead. Now, let's rob some banks. Straight to the deal. Miranda sneaks into the hall. Luckily, she worked there and knows all the ways around. She sees creepy walking Rachel and runs away from her. Stupid. She's your buddy now. Follow her. Miranda acts quite smart for a crazy girl like she's used to breaking into houses. Anyways, she gets into Pete's office. There she gets keys and finds a photo of her with Pete. Damn simp. I bet you have something to do with the murder. Suddenly, Pete's PC turns on and we see a news report about Rachel committing suicide. Then, she's Rachel on a monitor. She's in a sanitary. Miranda runs there and finds Chloe. She's struggling in her cell, but seems like she's not alone. We see some dude's tattooed chest until Miranda gets scared and runs away. Damn it, girl. Your escape plan worked like a charm. Since when were you afraid of ghosts? You're working with them now. The next day, Pete visits Miranda. Chloe is okay. She didn't get assaulted by the devil. This time, Miranda mentions a tattoo she saw. The Anima Sola. Pete heard about this archetypal image and believes Miranda's brain made it up. Then they talk about Rachel. Pete says she committed suicide while Miranda believes she was murdered. Of course, she saw her bleeding. Will Pete believe? Nah, he remains the man of science. These atheists, they don't even believe in Santa Claus. Before leaving, Pete warns Miranda, you're being transferred to a psych ward cell now. Don't run away again or you'll go in solitary. The next day, Miranda meets Chloe and says she's sorry she didn't believe her before. Chloe hugs her. Yay, they're buddies now. He said you're next, whispers Chloe. Ouch, now you're in the gang, girl. Miranda's in her cell when she hears footsteps outside. Boo, screamer. You're lucky you didn't have to see it. I had to change my pants. I do this for you guys. That's Rachel. She starts throwing Miranda around the cell like a beach ball. Come on, girls. I thought you were best friends now. Guards run to the cell when Miranda's already passed out. The nurse tries to put some drugs in her, but she throws away both guards and a nurse, steals their keys, and runs away. Oh, so that was part of the plan, right? Miranda sneaks splinter cell style and gets into a abandoned tower. She goes to a swimming pool. Come on, Doc. It's not the best time for swimming. She dives in until the officers get away. I hope spooky Rachel doesn't appear. Oh no, here she is. Perfect timing, the guards are away. Miranda sneaks to the entrance where she finds Joe. She probably used to share some donuts with him because the dude doesn't give up her location for some reason. He even gives her the keys to his car and Miranda escapes. What? Really? Well, at least someone's on her side. And that's how Miranda becomes an escaped prisoner. So what now? Banks? Nah, Rachel won't leave her that way until they, don't know, solve her case or something. Miranda drives until her brakes stop working. Come on, Rachel. Why are you doing this? Miranda barely passes the truck and stops. What do you want from me? Miranda screams. Turns out, Rachel saved her from getting in a hole. Alright, sorry. Beer's on me. Miranda goes to her house. She hears Doug's voice on the second floor and follows the blood marks. She sees herself killing Doug with an axe and a not alone ridden with blood on the door. She gets to the bathroom and sees herself in a bathtub full of blood. Miranda takes some time to cry over her photos until the blood drops on a specific one. Willow Creek. That's Rachel giving signs. Miranda drives there. She enters the creepy place only to get spooked by Hedwig on his road to Hogwarts. I hate those screamers for no reason. Miranda finds the basement and goes down. Whoa, it's a damn studio. Camera, lights on a bed that is covered in blood. Looks like a streamer's hub, but not sure what platform. Only fans or black and yellow YouTube. We see lots of substances too. Oh wow, it turns out her husband Doug was making some snuff movies down here. Great finding, but someone's coming. Cops. Darn, you took too much time here. Before the cops shoot Miranda, she gets spooked again. Rachel? Nah, it's a real girl now. It's one of Doug's victims. Everything gets in the news and the FBI is involved now. Miranda's in a police station where Pete, Teddy, and Phil come to support her. After all, the girl solved the massive case alone. I mean, not alone. Phil asks if Rachel could be one of Doug's victims. Probably, and that's what not alone actually meant. Phil shares that he's also got some dreams about Rachel being in flames. That's how Miranda found her. Guess the case is not over yet. Miranda believes the case is somehow connected with the ghost assaulting woman in prison. She tries to tell this to Pete, but he doesn't want to listen. Ghosts don't exist, blah blah blah. But in the office, Pete realizes it's cooler to be a believer and starts digging into Anima Sola's tattoo. Back in the cell, Sheriff Bob comes to visit Miranda. She tells him that not alone possibly means that there were two killers. So Doug was acting with someone. Bob asks her who it could be. Some friend of Doug, a sicko with a hard childhood. Someone who thought about assaulting his mom and possibly hurting animals. Bob gets nervous. All right, you guys guessed it. He's the second killer. He tries to tranquilize Miranda, but she fights back. During the fight, she reveals his chest. The tattoo, it's there. The light goes off. Thanks, Rachel. 
and Miranda manages to stick a syringe in Bob and run away. Too bad they're all alone in this darn police station, locked. Miranda hides under the table and finds a gun there. Bob gets distracted by a shadow. Rachel again? Yep, now Bob sees her too. Bob shoots at a gas pipe and gets fired when Miranda finishes the job with a clear headshot. And Pete comes. Perfect timing, bro. After some time, we see Miranda and Chloe casually walking in the street, enjoying their time. Chloe gets a job and leaves, while Miranda keeps seeing ghosts of missing people. Wasn't she like crazy, sitting in prison for murder? Guess you can make anyone a believer if you try hard. Moral of the story? Santa Claus is real.